Today we are going to discuss post focus and focus bracketing in Panasonic Lumix cameras like this one G80. Hi guys, welcome back on my channel, my name is Kagel and today we are going to talk about another functions of Lumix cameras. This time it will be post focus and focus bracketing in my G80. Let's start with minimum requirement for one of these options. First of all you will require one of the lenses which support autofocus. So you won't be able to use manual lenses like for example this old Helios. Second thing of course is Lumix camera. And the third thing is any type of tripod, so you can stabilize your camera while shooting photos. It's highly recommended especially for bracketing, however it's not 100% needed when you are making post focus. Probably you are thinking if there is any difference in both techniques, and actually there is, and let me explain. First of all, post focus function takes pictures only in 4K. Secondly, all these pictures are JPEGs and the camera doesn't shoot RAW files. Third, camera measures the entire screen and selects all the objects on the screen, then focus on all the objects and take multiple shots. On the end of taking pictures, camera save it as a short video and allows you to select one of these frames as a single picture or you can merge them all together to create one stacked image. And this leads us to point number 4, as I said already, the camera can merge all the images in the camera body, so we can get the results straight from the camera. However, camera software isn't perfect, and sometimes you can see these imperfections in your final image. And the last thing is a fact that very often you don't need to use any tripod, and you are able to make this shot handhelded. First of all, you have to turn your dial to post focus option. And now the only thing you have to do is to click on release button. As you can see the camera is scanning full frame and select focus for each square to take a picture. Now we have to wait a moment and it's done. Now we have access to all the images taken by the camera and we can select each and save it as JPEG. The camera also allows us to merge the image. We can select auto option where the camera is using all the pictures taken and we can choose manual option where we can choose pictures to merge. Ok, so what can we get by using focus bracketing function? First of all, camera can take all the pictures in RAW files format, so you get all the resolution available in your camera. Second thing is the fact that you have full control on your camera and you decide how much depth of field you want to get. So the best option is to take the nearest object and then go step by step as far as you want. Third is the fact that you decide how many pictures has to be taken. You can take 10 shots, 20, 100, it's up to you. You can also decide what's the focus distance between next shots. Fourth thing, and I think it's obligatory, you always have to use any type of tripod to stabilize your camera so it won't move while taking pictures. It's time for point number five, and if it comes to main differences, you can't merge your images in camera body. You have to download all of them to your computer and use one of the softwares which allows to merge them. You can stack your images in Photoshop, Lightroom or Helicon, which means that you will have to spend some extra money to purchase one of these softwares. Ok, now it's time for focus bracketing. First of all you have to select your left dial to single shot mode. And I would recommend you to keep manual program as well, as you want to be the one who is responsible for depth and exposure of each image. Then we go to menu, first tab and we have to scroll to second page. The last option of second page on my Lumix G80 is bracketing. This function has to be turned on. In this case we select focus bracketing and then we should go to more settings. Step defines what's the focus difference between pictures taken by the camera. Second option says how many images you want to take. Probably while taking macro shot you will have to take around 100 or 200 pictures. In this case I'm using macro lens, however I'm not that close to the object and I think 50 images is supposed to be enough. 
And the last option is sequence. For the best results, I always use second option. It means that I have to select the closest point that I want to have in focus, and then the camera only takes pictures further away from that point. And as you can see on LCD screen, there is an information that bracket function is on. Select our closest point. And now the only thing we have to do is click on the release button. As you can see, the camera is slowly taking pictures one behind the other and also focus points of each picture are further away from the initial focus point. And here we go, pictures are done. We can check them all together in the camera. When you download these pictures to your computer, these are all separate files. Let's see comparison of pictures merged in camera body and helicon. The camera software can give us very strange results, so we have to be very careful while selecting images that we want to merge. And as you can see on this example, helicon does much better job. However, it doesn't mean that post focus function in Lumix cameras is unusable. As long as object in front and the background are not covering each other, you can stack these images quite well. Otherwise the camera has a lot of problems trying to merge these pictures properly. And here you can see a few examples of pictures stacked in Helicon. You can expect much better quality of final picture and no problems with shifting. And this leads us to short summary where I try to mention main differences between these two methods. I hope that this short tutorial was helpful to you. So if you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up. If you have any questions about Lumix camera or gear that I use, you can find me on Instagram and leave me some questions there. As always, I'm happy to help you. If you want me to describe any other functions in Lumix cameras, let me know down in the comments, so I will try to prepare a video about it. That's it for today, thanks for watching and see you next time.